Oh. I'm Nikino. It's nice to see you. Oh, yes, Maggie. Likewise, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm very happy to do this podcast, uh, podcast on the Paradiso 27th and uh, um, welcoming also our listener. Um, let's, let me introduce myself uh, uh, briefly. My, my name is Nicolino Applauso. Uh, I'm a teacher of Italian here at, uh, in Maryland. Uh, I teach at the Applauso Italian Learning Center, also at the Loyola University in Maryland and Morgan State University. And uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm joined by, by my co-host uh, uh, Maggie here. <laughs> Hello, I'm Maggie Fritz Morgan, and I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where I teach at uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And um, I think today's a great day to be talking about this canto. I'm mean, excited to be here because it's, uh, I'm, I'm just getting a thunderstorm. And so now that we're talking about your <laughs> changes and chaos, it's the perfect time to talk about um, Peter flying off the handle a little bit. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, I think the highest is a pet. Uh, very good. Well, a quick question, Maggie. Um, this canto is definitely very well known. Uh, what are your reasons? You know why you like this particular canto of, of all the cantos, perhaps uh, in the in the commedia? Wow, that's a great question. You know, I, I first uh, I first noticed this canto in my very first reading of the comedy because I noticed that it's the last place in the universe that has a physical place, right? So we're in a, a crystalline sphere which encloses all of the other heavenly spheres all the way down to planet Earth in the middle. And then outside of that, there is only the mind of God, the Empyrean. And I was really interested in that switch between the physical universe and the external universe. Then I forgot about the Canto for a long time. And I started noticing it and paying attention again when I noticed how St. Peter speaks up there in heaven. Uh, he's got a pretty foul mouth. Which maybe we can talk about <laughs> later. <laughs> what drew you to this canto? Oh yes, uh, I think uh, for the very same reason, uh, especially in the Paradiso. You know, there's this cliche, there's very refined uh, cantica, uh, very high, lofty. Uh, but indeed, we find uh, I think one of the most violent, uh, in a way, I will argue, satirical um, invective of the old commedia by no other than Saint Peter. And uh, I really love the the setting, the the way. Uh, is introduced uh, the character of St. Peter with this uh, uh, red, reddish sky and uh, the blushing of Beatrice and this uh, thundering uh, uh, invective. And uh, I, I found it uh, a very powerful and it really uh, spoke to me. And uh, I mm. think uh, one of my uh, very, very remarkable uh, canto here. <laughs> it really stands out. And um, yeah, that Peter just kind of exploding, right? He even shoots sparks. Right, like, I oh, often yes. shoot sparks and get get angry about it, but that's not how the canto starts, right? It's a really beautiful, serene, like. Um, there's some beautiful music. Like, let's look at the very beginning. Um, oh, yes. We have I, all I, of yeah. paradise singing together, and they say, "Al Padre, al Fino, al, al Spirito Santo," to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and they're singing Gloria all together. Yeah. Right. And, and Dante's reaction is it's so sweet. I feel tipsy. I feel drunk. Right. We've got this. Oh, yes. In a yes. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just this wonderful kind of blissed out divine, I don't know, this divine joy. Why the sudden change, do you think? Why does Dante want to start like that? Oh, yes. And then it all on fire with Peter. I, you know, I think uh, in a way there is some similarity with other canto, like for example, uh, in the canto of Casella, you know, I'm thinking other canto would have a musical connotation, there is this uh, always uh, uh, very uh, liturgical songs at the beginning, then we go to a more lay background, but here I found very interesting in connection to the riso, the satire, uh, we have uh, in a way uh, this uh, uh, very uh, different value, uh, our, our laughter is introduced, is a very uh, I would say light, uh, sal sal salvific uh, uh, mm -hmm. way, uh, the laughter, the riso dell'universo. Uh, and then we have this other uh, portion. Great cocktail, El riso dell'universo, we should make that into a cocktail, the smile of the universe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <maybe. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Especially in connection to inebriarsi. I, uh, I found it interesting, I think the canto before, I think there was Adam who was speaking and he uh, saw him. And then uh, uh, you have this song that springs in and uh, is drunk. And then 
and out of nowhere, maybe the color too, red, you know, maybe some winery <laughs> imagery. <laughs> we are in the East Coast, not in the West Coast with the California and Napa Valley, but uh, definitely speaks out this, <laughs> this, uh, this so part. Yeah. And uh, what do you think then? I think the, the, uh, the rhymes are also very different here, you know, the Z. We can also read some portion, uh, O gioia, no, in Fabula Allegrezza. Uh, o vita integra d'amore di pace, o senza brama sicura ricchezza. Uh, now with the Z, uh, kind of mellow uh, rhymes. What do you think? And you, can see, you can hear in the Italian and see in the English too, this kind of repetition of the O, 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 right? Which kind oh, of yes. just helps us participate in what Dante is feeling, I think. Uh, oh, yes. I wonder, do you think he's speaking from the voice of the of the Dante who's actually having this kind of vision or is he remembering as the poet who's already had the whole pilgrimage? Like, is that the poet or the pilgrim voice there? I don't know. That is uh, the ambiguity, yes. I, I was thinking the same thing. Is, is he uh, remembering is uh, this uh, uh, sort of uh, oniric, you know, dream like, uh, or going back to a memory or the author? Um, I think later on when uh, uh, St. Peter comes and then we have this, uh, Sort of investiture to to him, maybe is the is the uh, both of them that merge. I I think because uh, uh, don't do no will be be the poem and the author is a very I think momentous canto here. We reaching a very important moment in the in the paradiso, uh, and uh, I think uh, this uh, understanding of the, the the purity, the happiness, the joy going upward. And then we have the shocking thunder. Likes uh, Dante, I think, likes to bring this contrapunto, which maybe you know sometimes connected to uh, uh, what I, I also have argued, or others have argued elsewhere, like the sa satura, the sort of uh, variation and the the, the 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 variation of different uh, tones. I think you also talk uh, about this in, uh, in one of your studies about the uh, the colors, the way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is. It's absolutely a canto of kind of changing, like transformations, right, from one color into another color. Um, the snow is falling up all of a sudden, right? Everything is sort of inverted. Um, and then there's that later on, um, there's a comparison between um, the, let's see, the, the prima mobile, which is discussed as like a, a flower pot holding the roots of a plant that grows inward. So, and it's kind of upside down, right? And so all of these inversions and color changes. Can I read my favorite, um, oh, my yes, favorite sir, sort of rhetorical <laughs> figure? Oh, so, yes. Let me open up here. <laughs> this is where Dante is um, describing the change that takes, that overcomes Peter when he just kind of, starts manifesting his anger. He says, um, let's see. Before my eyes, the four torches stood flaming and the one that had come first, that's Peter, began to glow more vigorously and in appearance became such as Jove would be if he and Mars were birds and exchanged feathers. I mean, this, it's just a lot of exchanges going on. So, going on. so we've got this, this flame, this torch, that if he were a, a god, and if there were another god too, and they were both birds, and if they exchanged their, it's just too many transformations, right? It's hard to keep track of. Oh, yes. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful image of this Jupiter, you know, the planet, and then we have the Marte, the planet of war, that comes in as an infection, you know, almost like a, a disease to uh, break this uh, joy, this uh, uh, mm. This image of uh, Augelli, I think, is very proper because you know the singing of the birds. Like uh, uh, here in the United States, we experience the singing of the uh, cicale, you know, the, <laughs> the cicada. The cicada, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think that's good. The cicadas have have substituted the bird song. <laughs> for our listener, yeah, I don't know if this uh, podcast will be recorded for future for posterity, but in 2021, in the summer months here in the United States, we have the invasion of the cicada that came after, I believe, 17 years. Uh, they were underground, something like that, mm -hmm. and they are uh, singing uh, throughout, uh, I don't know for how long, but <laughs> it's... Yeah. Uh, it's long overdue. We're waiting for St. Peter to come, maybe. And 
<laughs> send them uh, down again. Uh, but but yes, uh, that's one of my favorite too. I um, I think Dante sets up a wonderful theatrical uh, uh, images here of the of the colors. Um, I think it haunted me for for a long time. This scene and. Uh, I was th- I was mentioned. This is on the cover of the, one of my <laughs> recent study. <laughs> I can show you. Uh, yes, this is the sky, with the yeah. reddish color. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, Dante, which uh, reflects this reddish color. And uh, also Beatrice too. Um, it's uh, the color of uh, uh, Mars. You know, the, the red, uh, the, the the color of uh, uh, I would say divisio furore. Indignation. <laughs> Indignation, anger, war. Um, I think, should we talk a little bit about just why Peter is so angry? It's, I yeah. mean, it's surprising. It's the most surprising kind of part of the canto. We think that we're on our way up to see, um, to move past this physical realm, and we need to hear Peter out first. So, um, yeah, what, what would you say is the kind of the substance of, of Peter's rage maybe rage is the wrong word i don't know mm. oh yes i think uh, uh, i can uh, um, maybe i can read this part because uh, it's almost like uh, the prayer that we saw before like a repetition like a mea culpa is repeated three times and uh, very strong uh, maybe i'll read this is another of oh, my favorite part is a uh, one well, very long uh, tirade that st peter's and uh, when i read it uh, I think, uh, especially when reading the in the region Italian, uh, usually uh, you know, have the student read it. We read it together. We can really hear uh, the way the sound is changing from the sweetness of the beginning. And I can read maybe this portion. Um, uh, Quando io di se io mi trascoloro, non ti maravigliar che dicendo io vedrai trascolorar tutti costoro. It's a little warning here. Quelli cusurpa in terra il luogo mio, il luogo mio, il luogo mio, che vaca nella presenza del fiol di Dio. Fatto a del cimitero mio cloaca, del sangue della puzza, che il perverso che cadde di quassù, laggiù si placa. Oh, mamma mia. Wow. Yeah, so here we've got, we've got um, St. Peter, who's furious that his, his place on earth, which is the, um, the the throne of the Pope, right, uh, uh, in the Vatican, is vacant or it's it's being neglected. And yeah, for me, that those rhymes are the ones that I was just shocked to find in Paradiso, cloaca, which is a, kind of a Latin sounding word, right? It's not a common word in Italian at all. And it means sewer, oh, yes. uh, sewer, and then puzza, stench, stink. And, and then this like kind of gross, perverted, I mean, it even says perverso, the perverted one up there is sitting down enjoying this, like the bloodbath that has come um, in the seat of the papacy, which, um, yeah, we've got corrupt popes in St. Peter's, in St. Peter's spot. And so what are they up to? They are, they are basically um, pursuing their own political ends and uh, launching wars against other Christians, um, I don't love that it kind of implies that it's fine to go off and launch wars against other people, but I get that that's part of what Dante is okay with. Well, um, yes, uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, the, the doesn't he names always a pe- and, uh, he doesn't refrain, doesn't shy away Dante to include the proper name. Uh, but this time is strange. Uh, I found it interesting. I think. Uh, uh, I thought a lot about this. He doesn't use uh, the name. Uh, he had the chance. He's St. Peter, so mm-hmm. we are in the Paradiso. But uh, for some reason, um, he uses the demonstrative, you no, know, the pronoun quelli, which is, you know, zurpa, so it's a singular, like uh, he, who, uh, mm-hmm. quello, we, we will say modern Italian. And, um, you know, the, I think uh, for 700 years, there's been a lot of, a lot of ink uh, of course, Boniface VIII, uh, early commentator, they said Lo Papa, uh, you know, in their language. But then, um, but Dante just uh, keeps it open. And uh, the names are used later. I found it this interesting to talk about the positive models. Lino, you know, the first popes. Uh, mm-hmm. They are mentioned here. Lin, Cleto, and, uh, you know, Dante doesn't have any problem in mentioning them. I guess uh, the place maybe doesn't even... Uh, uh, given the honor uh, in a bracket to mention who this quail is, uh, but uh, it's interesting how Dante decides to keep it very open. Peter doesn't even want to distinguish 
him by recording his name, right? Um, and all of those popes, I, you know, I really love that list of popes that um, they're from er- like the early years of Christianity, the first, second, and third centuries, I think. And so we've got all of these kind of founding martyrs who spilled their own blood to, to nurture kind of a little baby church. And this was before there was a lot of kind of wealth in the church. One thing I really love um, is the way Peter moves from this luogo mio, so my place, my place, my place. And then he soon like lists all of those popes to say like, it's not just me, it's us, it's a collective, right? So like Peter is is angry and it's sort of it's sort of personal, my place, my place, my place, but it's also kind of a dispossession of everybody, everyone who saw who like fought to build a church together, like a bot a, a religious community, a body, they're all dispossessed, they're all suffering because they have a you know bad leader. Oh yes, absolutely. And the, the, what is striking also this moral decay, you know, this uh, physicality, you know, like the the cloaca, sangue, la puzza, mm. the pr- production of uh, excrements, you know, that's uh, we are in the highest uh, uh, place here in the paradiso, and uh, uh, it's very shocking to find this very strong. Uh, that's one of one of the main reasons why I found this canto very powerful. Uh, this. Uh, uh, this idea, and uh, we go, I think, uh, to the reason the economy, the money, always the, the filth, the, what uh, is the sad matrix of human uh, uh, decay. And I think uh, later on, the, the, the Quisto d'oro usata, mm-hmm. Quisto das viver lieto. Uh, so, non fu nostra intenzione che destra mano di nostro successor parte sedesse. And this, uh, I think, is another important part. Uh, uh, venduti e mendaci, lupi rapaci, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and at the end, uh, this idea of keeping, uh, really, uh, there's many, I think, uh, interpretation, but uh, the idea of pro- appropriating uh, what is not, uh, it should be public domain, that the papal mm-hmm. leader should be uh, using and sharing the riches for the people, I think uh, it's clear this uh, very strong message of denunciation. And I wonder what it felt like as a kind of a small, maybe a private person, a, you know, a Christian reader who um, would like to look to a Pope for leadership, spiritual guide, yeah. to read this kind of message in, in Dante's Paradiso. I mean, it's totally satirical and utter condemnation. And uh, um, it, it's really kind of devastating and, and frightening, right? Um, you become angry yourself, um, do you think Beatrice is, um, I mean, she kind of goes on her own rant in the second half of the canto. Oh, yes. Do, <laughs> does she leave us with any hope for the future? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, well, I think, uh, yeah, there's no really defense, uh, the, uh, you know, against uh, quel, uh, or quelli, that may be uh, the popes and uh, all um, the, the papas in Avignone. I think uh, Beatrice uh, reacts to that uh, denunciation, I think is a very in- beautiful imagery, like the innocent uh, uh, person that uh, just shies when he hears the terror, uh, terrific and horrible crimes. Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell. And uh, um, it's uh, it's very interesting for many, believe, especially the believe back then, you know, uh, there is some also research done on this about the, 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 the location of the church, you know, St. Peter was built, you know, it was believed to be built upon the tomb where St. Peter was buried. So the idea that uh, there is the physical uh, 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 physical body of St. Peter buried underneath where the Pope is sitting, and the Pope is not creating anything but excrement upon the tomb where the, the, the physical body is laying and rest, and uh, upon which you know the, the church of St. Peter was believed to be built. Uh, very, very, I mean, there's nothing to, to be done and to be said. I think that teach is just, uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's like the ultimate desecration. And it seems like in this case, then Peter's rage, maybe rage, rage sounds unjustified, but He's indignant. It's indignant. Say, yes, uh, and yes. Righteous anger, right? Um, and that's maybe how we should feel too. I think you know Beatrice sort of blushes to hear Saint Peter, and all of the people around Saint Peter sort of also turn red. And and so if if we are starting to get angry too um, at corruption, nope. Finished. Nicolino, you can see I've changed color. Um, 
<laughs> we had some adventures. Um, we were cut off a couple days ago by um, a strike of lightning, and your your power went out. Then my power went out um, last night. I've uh, since we last talked. I've also flown uh, from Chapel Hill to Wisconsin, where my family lives, and um, so now we're picking back up again. Oh yes, a different state uh, and a different color. Si trascolora, but the same canto. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yes, uh... <laughs> different color, same time, though. Um, you know, I, I'll say that when I was flying over um, you know, the sort of the, the East Coast and the, and the Midwest, I was looking down and it kind of reminded me of this part in Canto 27 where, where uh, Dante gets to look down and kind of take one last look at the planet Earth. And he looks down and, and mm -hmm. suddenly all of its problems seem so distant and far away. And that seemed, um, it was kind of nice to have that that aerial um, perspective. Yes. We've got a lot of um, kind of conflicts and such in our country too. And so somehow being above it all, kind of getting some distance, I found really. Oh yes, uh, and Dante is in a privileged position. You can see from afar uh, all, all the, the earthly. And I think uh, that's a very important point uh, that you're making. Uh, and also in the, in the, maybe there is a connection with the issue of responsibility. I was thinking also, what St. Peter says to, uh, to Dante, the pilgrim, maybe the author, or maybe the reader, um, and is uh, one of the very strong uh, uh, line of the, of the Paradiso, non nascondere quel che io non nascondo. Yes. So, the, go and deal. It's this so. kind of, like, open your mouth, don't hide, right? It's, it's almost a scolding tone, right? Or a, like an admonition that Dante, yes. he's got to, what, stand apart and be able to speak truth to the masses when he comes back from the pilgrimage. Oh yes, uh, like you mentioned, once you have this aerial perspective, you can see things from afar, but also from a detached position, not too much. Uh, well, there is the, the step of emotion, the, the, the indignation, the, the strong emotional reaction of anger, like you mentioned. And uh, then uh, we have the moment of reckoning. We can see uh, everything and uh, we have to uh, res uh, be responsible and re responsive. So at the moment, I think uh, we can definitely relate with many tensions in our own time. Uh, in the heat of the moment, it's easy uh, to attack one party or the other. And then we can see the responsibility and the connection to, to um, a wider problem that we're all involved in. So <laughs> it's so true. And, and a prophet like Sir Dante positions himself as a as a prophet has to sort of set himself apart and take a step back in that way. Um, oh yes. I think when we last talked, we were just about to kind of uh, think a little bit about Beatrice and what she says. Um, yes. He also gives an invective, right? This long satirical rant against greed, I think, sort of the human desires for all material things. This is the portion that you were mentioning. Um, oh, maybe we can read this part, che dici, Maggie? Yeah. O cupidigia che immortali affonde si sotto te, che nessuno ha potere di trarre gli occhi fuori delle tue onde. Ben fiorisce negli uomini il volere, ma la pioggia continua con verde in bozzacchioni e sostiene vere. Mm. So this is um, that kind of that, that flood of water, this continuous rain of, of cupidity, of kind of vicious desire, and it turns the good fruits into, uh, into just kind of rotten, mm -hmm. mm, rotten things you don't want to eat, spoils us. And beautiful ending here, a vero frutto dopo verrà dopo il fiore. I mean, Beatrice, is, she's really going into the prophetic mode here. Like, a fruit will follow on, fine fruit will follow on the flower. And it's it kind of, it takes us back to the, you know, a citation, like, the arc of the moral universe bends towards justice, mm -hmm. which we all want to believe and hope. What do we do when it feels like it's not? <laughs> Oh, yes, uh, yes, uh, usually this rightful uh, uh, reaction of uh, bringing uh, or calling uh, and calling the others to, to be responsible. I think this uh, final message is to really call upon everybody uh, to be uh, proactive and uh, res responsive and responsible for the, the wrongdoing. Uh, I always find interesting uh, quello, non nascondere quello. First, we have quelli, which was a person. He, uh, then that is a, a deed, an act that we must uh, uh, all work together in concert to, to, 
to make this a better better life and uh, definitely i think uh, very uh, uh very, very good uh, good way to to end uh, especially during this difficult time with the pandemic political uh, uh tensions uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a I think it's a it's a it's a good message for all of us to take a step back and look at look at our whole world and do uh, what we can to make that that threshing floor. Uh, <laughs> oh, definitely. I, I will do that in Maryview in Wisconsin, <laughs> our <laughs> listener as well, <laughs> wherever they, 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 they may be. Eh? And uh, very good. Eh? Well, uh, this was a, a very uh, delightful discussion, uh, Maggie. I really appreciate uh, um, that, that we, we, we were able to do this. It was so nice to see you, Nicolino. Thank you for the invitation. And Laura, uh, thanks everybody and uh, uh, to our listener as well. <laughs> thanks everybody. See you soon.